on Friday, we started to get major news out of the BSV community as if as if that shitcoin affinity scam couldn't get any worse. It actually has. And we're going to dive into it and make sense of the whole thing. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a great weekend. So, so we had some very interesting, some very interesting news start to develop out of uh, out of BSV. Lucky Redfish, thank you very much for tagging me in this because no, I had not seen this on September 29th. Let's start diving into it. So here's a tweet from Hoddle Anot, Space Cat. For the people who don't know, he's currently being pursued uh, by Craig Wright, and um. Yeah, this has been going on since uh, since 2019. So to be honest, to me, this seems like some light at the end of the tunnel that is not a train. <laughs> so this is good. Anyways, something serious has just happened over at the BSV camp. Kristen Egger Hansen, group CEO of NChain Global, has parted the company. Craig Wright, chief scientist at Enchain, has also been scrubbed from the Enchain website. The website of Agar Hansen's company, Custos Group, has been taken down. All this happened today. Smells like a panic. Now, I'm going to warn you guys, this story right now has a whole lot of twists and turns. And I've done my best to put together the information in kind of a, a logical sequence, okay? So... That was the first tweet that I saw uh, that I was tagged in by Lucky Redfish, the one I just read to you guys before. Now, here's a tweet from Kristen himself, and this is on September 30th. The group management of N-Chain Global, which consists of six persons, did a serious whistleblow to the board of N-Chain Global, collectively signed off 26th of September. Thereafter, we got then either dismissed or suspended by the same people we reported about. Despite the fact that Calvin Iyer is a minority owner on paper, he acts as though he owns 100% of the company. I'm horrified to see Calvin Iyer threatening us all by scaring people off from doing their obvious duty. I'm horrified, shocked, and obviously scared for my life. Going public is very hard, but the right thing to do. I still believe in the technology, but it does not exist because of Craig. Other people been involved, such as Shatters333. So now this is October 1st, okay? And this is an article out of What the Finance, and it appears that What the Finance is publishing everything that Kristen Agar Hansen is giving them. So I, I mean, this is so far, there's like two separate stories that have come out about BSV, and both of them have come from this uh, this source. Anyways, here we go. Leaked email from Calvin Iyer to Craig Wright says he is not Satoshi. We are surprised. <laughs> it's so funny, right? Like Bitcoiners, <laughs> Bitcoiners have been saying this for years. And it's just it's just absolutely hilarious for me anyways, to see somebody like Christian, right? Um, who obviously has influence, you know, um, financial power. And it's funny because they brought him into Enchain thinking that this guy was going to be like some type of a, um, you know, uh, some type of a, I, I guess, kind of like a guiding light over there, like somebody who can kind of help bring legitimacy. And all that happened was, was that this guy's not, as it seems, as it seems, this guy, Kristen, is not willing to just tarnish his name for what could be big money somewhere down the line. And I'll... I don't know what his angle is yet, but we're going to discuss this at the end. Let's just keep going through the story because this, this story got has lots of winding turns. Fresh allegations that Craig Wright forged documents. Oh my gosh, we are surprised. Christian Agar Hansen vows to continue his cleansing of Enchain. There has been a strong reaction from the BSV community. Indeed, indeed. Christian Agar Hansen says he is sticking around BSV and still believes in the technology. I think that that is signal, and we're going to discuss this a little bit after. Ex-CEO will be writing a book on the whole N-Chain debacle. Calvin Iyer accused of hanging around with young girls. Well, if he didn't take so many pictures of himself with these what seem to be underage girls, you know, maybe he wouldn't get accused of that so much. But anyways... <laughs> that's that's not really the concern of our story right now. The concern of our story is is essentially how Kristen got kicked out of Enchain 
and uh, <laughs> the battle that is going on in BSV. Calvin Iyer's email begins with a candid acknowledgement of the financial burden that Wright's litigation disaster has imposed on him. Iyer explicitly states that the money spent on litigation is akin to pissing away his kid's inheritance. This sets the stage for the high financial stakes involved, not just for Iyer, but also for the broader shitcoin ecosystem. No, it's got nothing to do with the broader shit. Nobody cares about BSV, okay? <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, it, it's just funny. Um, what we do care about, though, what we do care about is the um, the ridiculous litigation set forth by by Craig Wright uh, against all the proponents that essentially, number one, claim that he's a fraud, and number two, um, that we believe that we have enough evidence uh, to show that he is, in fact, not Satoshi. But anyways, but anyways, let's continue on the story. Now, supposedly... Um, and we haven't entirely confirmed this yet, although although I will show some some tweets that indicate that this is an email from Calvin to Craig Wright. OK, so let's dive into it here, because this is the email that was being referred to. As I sit here, I'm on a beach in southern Spain. I have a good life. I have every intention of keeping it this way right now. The only negative in my life is your litigation disaster and getting old. But that one I cannot fix. I will accept your explanation that you did not actually threaten me. So the following is the situation we find ourselves in. I have been operating under the assumption that you and Ramona have the keys and that you were simply pretending not to have them as part of some strategy that you have trapped yourself in. But now that we're looking at a situation where continuing to deny you have them ruins your life and damages your supporters. I am forced to make a tough decision. It no longer matters if you have the keys or not, as it is my opinion, based on advice from Zafar and others, that you cannot win the COPA trial. If you do not sign at Harvard, so I have no choice in what I have to do. This, of course, also means that you lose all the other cases other than maybe the token theft case but to me losing copa even puts this at risk as copa will set precedent that you are not satoshi in law all ip other than n chain patents will disappear <laughs> this is pretty bad this means that you're not going to be able to get a court to declare that you own any tokens either you have also verified that there is no complete paper trail evidencing the trust owning any of the tokens this, after nearly a year of Zurich reviewing all the evidence you have, this means you cannot repay me the money you owe me for all the litigation to date. This means every cent spent on your cases is me pissing away my kid's inheritance. If you have the keys, your best play is to now use them. Going to jail for perjury, but having the entire world accept you are a flawed Satoshi is infinitely better than losing this case and only being considered likely to be a flawed Satoshi after your death by historians as no other realistic person is ever found. However, it's my opinion that once the world accepts you are a flawed Satoshi, everything changes and all of this just goes away. I can make it all go away, in fact. There is zero reason to continue to pretend you do not have the keys if you really have them. Side bonus is that using the keys in this way combined with the verdict in Florida will likely be accepted replacement for proper paperwork for financial institutions. It's clear that once you lose, you will need me more than ever. I will be the only one standing between your family and the soup kitchen. At least at the moment, depending on how self-destructive you get, I'm not stopping my funding of the association, the ecosystem, or N-Chain and you. In fact, this decision makes funding them a lot easier for me. From my perspective, this decision improves everything now. Your continuing to accept this funding is your acceptance that our existing deal is still valid and that you agree with me that my stopping funding, a lost cause, is not a violation on my side. You are further agreeing that you personally will pay me back for all the money I have spent on your project, even if the trust never gets any tokens. Those were the the juiciest pieces of that uh, of, of that email, um, and we're gonna we're gonna continue here with the uh, with the uh, the enigma of Satoshi's keys. Ayer has been operating under the assumption that Wright has these keys, but has been pretending otherwise for strategic reasons. The financial implications of this is colossal. If Wright does have the keys, using them could substantiate his claim to be Satoshi, thereby affecting the valuation of related assets and projects. So 
if, if you guys are still following along, depending on the way you see this, to me, I think they're trying to set the stage for the flawed Satoshi, um, for the flawed Satoshi narrative, right? Oh, look, he is. He's just totally stupid and incapable and stressed and whatever other reasons we can come up with for him not being able to sign uh, any of the transactions. You know, so <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to work personally, but I think that that's kind of like, th this is kind of like their, their Hail Mary. That in complete denial, of course. Anyways, let's continue. The COPA trial, a financial litmus test. Ayer's emails identifies the COPA trial as a critical juncture that could make or break Wright's financial future. Losing the trial would set a legal precedent that Wright is not Satoshi, thereby affecting the value of all intellectual property other than N-chain patents. It would also mean that Wright would not be able to repay Ayer for the money spent on litigation, further straining their financial relationship, legal competence, and financial consequences. Ayer's email criticizes Wright's legal acumen, stating that the only reason he won in Florida was that the other side had conflicting agendas. This raises questions about Wright's ability to navigate the complex legal landscape, which has direct financial implications. Ayer suggests the public perception plays a crucial role in the financial outcome of this saga. If Wright is accepted as a flawed Satoshi, it could change the financial dynamics entirely. Ayer believes that he could make all the legal and financial troubles go away if this shift in public perception occurs. The email indicates that Ayer is considering withdrawing financial support for Wright's legal battles. This could have a cascading effect, leading other investors and even legal representatives to pull out. The financial ramifications of this could be disastrous for Wright, leaving him vulnerable to legal defeats and financial ruin. Ayer's emails also touches on the moral and financial obligation that Wright has towards repaying the money spent on litigation. This adds another layer of complexity to the financial dynamic between the two parties, potentially leading to legal battles over repayment if the COPA trial is lost. The reactions from the BSV community, the latest revelations about Craig Wright as exposed in the leaked email from Calvin Iyer has sent shockwaves through the, B the Bitcoin SV community. Many in the community had placed their faith and financial investments in Wright's claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto, the pseudonymous creator of Bitcoin. The email which questions Wright's legal strategies and even the existence of the so-called Satoshi's keys has led to a crisis of confidence among some BSV supporters and certainly outsiders. The leaked email from Calvin Iyer to Craig Wright is a financial powder keg waiting to explode. It reveals the intricate financial web that both parties are entangled in with potential repercussions for the broader crypto market. Okay, so that article really does a good job of summarizing the entire landscape and, and what's happening. But since then, we've had more information come out and we need to cover it. So this, um, so essentially Monday morning, um, Monday morning, I see this tweet from Christian Agar Hansen. I will soon launch an email from Calvin Iyer talking about the deal with Dr. Craig Wright's ex-wife, Lynn Wright. I never met Lynn. And after this email, the last person on earth I wanted to meet was her. I, I guess he meant her, not here. <laughs> We was paralyzed and, and shocked to hear that Calvin was prepared to pay people off to create his own narrative in court in relation to Dr. Yes, right. Guys, when you realize how many hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars are on the line, like, yeah, they're, they're going to pay whoever it is they have to pay off to make this seem legit. I knew I had to whistleblow this. Otherwise, I would have been complicit with Calvin tampering with witnesses for the purpose of getting people to believe Craig Wright is Satoshi. If successful in this task, Calvin Iyer had a deal that will give him 50% of the original Satoshi coins. I have this document too. I don't mind fighting for what I believe in, but no money in the world will get me to do this. He offered Mr. Ali Zafar king's counsel and me 100 million usd each to help him win the case but we were of course not prepared to get witnesses to lie about fact we were very clear to calvin Iyer if craig wright uses his keys and comes clean on all fraudulent documents he created that he can win the case otherwise he will lose i just want to go back to this this one point here because this just made me think of the scene uh, in Idiocracy, essentially, 
where where Joe is explaining to Frito <laughs> that if there is no time machine, he can't go back in time and open an account for him so that he could have b- billions of dollars. <laughs> I don't know why it made me think of that, but but it does. So you knew this thing was just a ride the whole time? Yeah. You thought you could really travel through time, huh? Yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. You're the smartest guy in the world. You're pretty dumb sometimes. So why didn't you tell us? Because I like money. I'm sorry. But if it's not a real time machine, there wouldn't have been any money. You know, because I can't go back in time and open a savings account. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't worry, yeah. man. It's OK. More info coming out of BSV, and here we go. This is a tweet from uh, from Arthur Van Pelt, and uh, for the people who for the people who don't know Arthur, Arthur has been documenting this BSV saga uh, from the beginning, uh, and he has been attacked. He has been attacked verbally and in all kinds of ways. Uh, they've obviously people out of BSV have tried to dox him as well and do all kinds of stuff. But anyways, um, props to Arthur for. Uh, you know, for for documenting this whole entire saga as it's gone on. So here we go. Calvin Iyer just posted the latest end chain and Craig Wright news a few minutes ago. I, th- this is to me, this is just hilarious. This is this is Calvin's tweet. Okay. <laughs> Board took action, fired everyone incompetent. <laughs> can't spell incompetent. So the board fired everyone who's incompetent, except for the people who can't spell incompetent. Anyways, suspended all useless lackeys and is doing a number of third-party investigations. N-Chain is fine as it will now be fully integrated, fully integrated into my global group now that I am majority shareholder. So the delusion, the delusion from Calvin is real. Um, it's, it's, it's real. And here's a response to Calvin's comment. Craig's profile has been deleted in the Enchain homepage. And Calvin responds, Craig set up his own UK company, so now works by contract. So yeah, they're 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 definitely uh they're definitely hedging their losses. <laughs> they're getting ready to lose big time. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Just my opinion. Let's continue. Okay, so we've got we we've got some other interesting information here from Christian Agar Hansen. This came out on September 30th. And, and this is just more um I wouldn't say evidence, but it, it's just essentially it's it's information that can help strengthen the case uh essentially against Craig Wright being Satoshi because it it proves his malicious intent. So here we go. Uh, the last modified date has been deliberately backdated. This is this also shows that Dr. Wright was clearly lying when he said that the drive was preserved unused since 2007 as it contains websites from 2023. And then we have a note about the incriminating contents of his browsing history. The contents of the browsing history, his browsing history file shows that Dr. Wright has researched topics relating to backdating files and manipulating metadata. And then finally, October 2nd, we got this tweet out of BitNorbert. Stephen Matthews, uh, who's also known as Turkey Chop, uh, a very, you know, obviously, uh, you know, proponent of BSV, works for them, all that good stuff. Anyway, so he's been, well, doesn't work for them anymore. Uh, He's been fired from Wright International Investments. (laughs) Uh, So there you go. And here we've got the termination of director appointment right here. And it indeed shows that Stephen Raymond Matthews has been terminated from that position. Now. Okay, so here we go. So you can see there's massive shakeup going on in the management between N-Chain and all of these incestuous companies, okay? But let's take a look at some of the some of the uh, community feedback. Now, for the people who don't know, for the people who don't know who Daniel uh, Krawitz is, um, he was a actual Bitcoiner once upon a time. Um, he actually contributed heavily to um, the, the, the website that is that um, is currently run by Bitstein and uh, Pierre Rochard called the Nakamoto Institute. And yeah, some somehow along the way, he got lost. Anyways, let's see what he has to say about this. He's still only hearing arguments about Agar Hansen's motives, but not about what he's actually saying. Be prepared for Craig to lose the Copa case. I still think he's Satoshi. So, so guys, so look, okay? <laughs> They're just setting you up that what's going to happen is he's going to lose these cases. 
Craig is not Satoshi. BSV is indeed an affinity scam. But hey, we're warning you about this, okay? Because he's questioning. He's right. Like this. This is this is kind of part of it, right? Because Agar Hansen, um, sorry, Kristen, um, he actually did document um, what he was, what he actually said, and and they did document. Um, what their recommendations were for people to step down from the board, for people to step away from the projects. But you see, Daniel, Daniel needs to tweak that. He needs to tweak that narrative a little bit so that you have a little bit of doubt, right? Because with a little bit of doubt, he can introduce some of his bullshit. <laughs> okay. So, so that's it right there. We're still only hearing arguments about Kristen's motives. That's not true. We're, we're not hearing arguments about Kristen's motives. We're hearing about the fact that he had information that was brought to him that he then felt he could no longer in confidence stand behind and as a result made recommendations and as a result of those recommendations is no longer employed by Enchain and is no longer their CEO. So no, this is not about motives. This is about what really happened. Anyways, yeah, Daniel Krawitz, totally freaking wrecked shitcoiner. Was a Bitcoiner, though. Anyways, let's continue. All right. We've got a comment out of who else than the quote-unquote Bitcoin historian himself, right? Kurt, N-Chain drama has nothing to do with BSV. See, Kurt, there, there's a problem, though, see? Because BSV is is using N-Chain technology and, and all of those patents that are covered by N-Chain. So... So I, I know that you like to create revisionist history and you like to pretend and, and you like to just make up complete utter bullshit uh, about how BSV is the real Bitcoin, even though it's a fork of a fork of a fork. Um, guess what? N-chain drama really does have to do with BSV. Okay? It really does. And when this all falls apart, nobody is going to continue to believe your absolute nonsense and your revisionist history about a shitcoin that is not and never will be Bitcoin. Anyways, Kurt is coping. Here is an interesting comment out of a Twitter account that uh, follows a lot of the, the BSV drama. Wright will fake cry in court and claim he doesn't have any evidence anymore and felt pressured to forge false evidence. His team will also leverage his autism diagnosis to the max as an excuse for his bad decisions. What do we think, guys? What do we think? I mean, look, obviously, as Bitcoiners, we know that Craig is not Satoshi. <laughs> that's not that that's not a question for us, right? That that's not a question for us. Um, my personal perspective uh, is is that um, I'm trying to figure out what the angle is. What is the angle behind this? Why is this is this coming out now? Right? Um, part of it could be argued that this is just the the point that, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, Kristen just couldn't take it anymore and possibly did not want to lose, you know, whatever reputation that he he has left um, or, or even maybe even lose the ability to, you know, maybe even lose the ability to um, kind of regain his reputation, right? Because let's face it, uh, for the most part in Bitcoin, if you if you join, if, if you join the ranks of BSV, <laughs> You're, you're pretty much, you're, you're not just an enemy of freedom. You're, you're definitely an enemy of Bitcoin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so look, so why, right? Why? Uh, I, I think they're doing this. I think that this is being done um, to essentially distance and chain from Craig uh, to try to protect its IP. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think that uh, Calvin is stupid um, or anything like that. And I do think that he is smart enough to see the writing on the wall. And I do think that he's smart enough, or I'd like to believe that he's smart enough to hedge his bets. Um, I honestly have no idea how Craig is going to pay back those hundreds of millions of dollars that, that he owes Calvin. <laughs> I, I just I, I just don't see it. I, I really don't. But look, I, I would say that this most recent development um, with Kristen... Uh, the CEO, the ex CEO of of Enchain, stepping down suddenly after making those recommendations, 
if you ask me, this is the uh, this is the proverbial nail in the coffin. Like I, I don't think that this has much more room to run uh, before the wheels completely fall off. I mean, at this point, there's nothing holding those wheels on there. So, anyways, BSV, it's not Bitcoin, guys. That was our clip for today. Like, subscribe, help us grow the channel. I will catch you all tomorrow.